Hey guys, welcome back for another case review here at EMS 12 Lead. My name is David Didlake and the topic today is going to be lethal blockade. Now this particularly involves the combination of right bundle branch block and left anterior fascicular block and how those two in combination manifested for an acute LAD occlusion. So let's get started. I think it's good to review what a normal right bundle branch block should look like. Uh, it's imperative, furthermore, that we just prime the optic nerve that even though right bundle branch block is abnormal, there are some otherwise normal characteristics that run in tandem with it. This is from the Dr. Smith ECG blog, and for right bundle branch block, generally, there's a baseline ST segment throughout the entire 12 lead ECG until you get here to the right precordium in V1 through V3. Due to the aspect of abnormal depolarization begets abnormal repolarization, there's an expected slight ST segment depression here in V1 through V3 concomitant with a terminally deflected T wave. So these are all expected findings. This is a normal process for right bundle branch block. Something else that could potentially be normal for right bundle branch block is in the lateral leads V6, V5, AVL, and 1, you might encounter a big bulky T wave with ever so slight ST segment depression, or I'm, I'm sorry, ST segment elevation in these leads when it's subsequent to a large slurred S wave. That could very well be a normal variant. It should be assumed to be new until proven otherwise in the right clinical context of acute coronary syndrome. Now, as previously stated, a lethal combination with right bundle branch block is a left anterior fascicular block that is appreciated here in the frontal plane. So we'll move along to uh, today's case. All right, so this is a adult male who was experiencing chest discomfort and he was in the process of driving himself to the hospital when the chest discomfort became so overwhelming that he was forced to pull over to the side of the road and he called 911. So attending crews found him uh, pale and diaphoretic. He was very ill in appearance. He still had an otherwise stable blood pressure. He advised a history of diabetes, coronary artery disease, and in fact, he said he had a prior stent placement some uh, number of years ago, but he couldn't quite recall the precise infarct-related uh, artery. So a very sick patient in appearance. And then we have this abnormal 12 lead that uh, gets produced by the LifePak 15. So let's break it down. Well, here in the right precordium, I'm going to isolate the ST segment, or the J point, and you can see that there is elevation here at the J point. So this goes against everything that we just said should be expected as a normal variant for right bundle branch block. We should have a slight ST segment depression here in V1 through V3, but we have uh, ever so slight ST segment elevation here. And furthermore, there is concordant uh, T waves along with the ST segment elevation especially down here in V3. Now moving more laterally, I'm going to isolate, here's the J point, here's the J point, and here's the J point in V4 through V6. And remember we said it's expected for these ST segments and J points to be best baseline, but here they are demonstrably uh, depressed. Now we move over to the frontal, lane, uh, frontal plane, and here's that lethal combination, this leftward axis. And here the computer is measuring it at negative 60 degrees, so this is a left anterior fascicular block. And even though there's a lot of artifactual fuzz um, with this bandwidth of 0.05 to 150 hertz, you can still see J-point depression appreciable here in AVF and three. And there's some beat-to-beat -beat variability here, but nonetheless there is ST segment depression. So all of this in combination is indicative of a proximal LAD occlusion. Now here is where things get interesting. 
As the crews on scene were populating this uh, gentleman's demographic info into the software, um, his name popped up. And so they accessed that chart because a couple hours earlier he had been encountered by another crew on a different uh, ambulance uh, for the same complaint of chest discomfort. So let's see what that 12 lead showed at that particular encounter. So the timestamp, you can see that this is a couple hours earlier. And the first thing that pops out to us is that the QRS is narrow. This is a narrow QRS throughout the 12 lead ECG. This was captured during chest discomfort on the previous occurrence. And you can see that there's ever so slight ST segment elevation with an upward sloping contour in V2 all the way throughout V5. So there's the first abnormality uh, during this particular encounter with the patient's chest discomfort. Furthermore, there's an upward sloping, slide upward sloping of the ST segment here in 1 and AVL. And the, uh, there is a pre-existing leftward axis down here in the frontal plane. And then you can see that there's some remote Q-wave infarct. So it's most likely that this uh, prior MI that the patient was talking about was an RCA occlusion. Um, and there's also some early R-wave progression here in the right precordium to suggest that his inferior wall injury extended posteriorly as well. And these are the vestigial remnants of that uh, injury at that particular time. But it should be noted that despite the, despite the fact that the axis is already leftward, these ST segments and J points are baseline, which makes the fact that the previous ECG showing the ST segment depression, that is a new finding in and of itself. Okay, so let's jump ahead to when he arrives at the emergency room. And you can see that there's continuation of this right bundle branch block pattern with left anterior fascicular block. And additionally, there continues to be, even now, more pronounced ST segment elevation here in V1, V2, and slight here in V3, but it extends all the way out to V4. And now these are large, bulky, robust, hyperacute T waves to run in tandem with it. And there's lingering ST segment depression here in V6. All of the procedures were followed appropriately. There was a pre-hospital STEMI activation. Um, the cath lab was activated. The emergency department passed this patient along to the interventional cardiologist. He went back to the lab. He was found to have a proximal 100% LED occlusion. Unfortunately, he could uh, he arrested and he could not be resuscitated during the procedure. So an unfortunate outcome for the patient. However, expert recognition of the pattern on the EKG was, uh, was identified. And all of the appropriate steps were taken to ensure the best outcome for the patient. Um, but unfortunately, he died during procedure. So hopefully this helps in the process of encountering the abnormalities of an already pre-existing abnormal depolarization pattern of right bundle branch block. Go forth and do good work, and we'll see you next time.